And that's where I come in. I'm pulling back the curtain and explaining everything, because while authentic Wall Street gibberish can sound complex, it's not rocket science or brain surgery. You don't need to go to business school or work in an investment bank to understand it. You can comprehend all the abstruse vocabulary that we throw around as long as you have a translator, a coach like me who can explain what it all means. Think of me as a defector, someone who played for the other team, managing about $500 million of already rich people's money at that old hedge fund of mine, but who's now playing for you, teaching you how to navigate your way through the minefield of the stock market every weeknight here on May of Money. All right, forget the Da Vinci Code. Forget Enigma. To be a great investor, you need to break the Wall Street code, and I'm here to help you crack it. That's why tonight I'm giving you my Wall Street gibberish to plain English dictionary. Consider it a glossary of the most important terms that you absolutely must understand if you're going to actively manage some of your own portfolio. Words and concepts that many people in the financial industry really don't want you to get your head around. Because then you might actually feel more empowered. Empowered enough to pull your money out of their mutual funds or ETFs or stop handing over your fees. Let's start with a couple of extremely important ideas that go uh, we talk about all the time. They go hand in hand. Cyclical and secular. Now, you hear these all the time, right? Yet no one ever seems to explain what they mean, even though they're crucial to the process of picking good stocks. Cyclical has nothing to do with the spin cycle or your washing machine or Wagner's ring cycle. Not my kind of classical music. And secular isn't about the separation of church and state. Oh, and yes, a kudo to the late Louis Rukeyser, who first cracked that cyclical joke. We say a company is cyclical if it needs a strong economy in order to grow. It's it's cyclical because it depends on the business cycle. So machinery companies like a Caterpillar and Eaton fall into this category, along with raw materials players like a BHP or Rio Tinto and commodity chemical companies like the new Dow Chemical or PPG. These cyclical players are indeed hostages, hostages to the vicissitudes of the economy. When the economy heats up, they earn more money and we're willing to pay more for those earnings. But when it slows down, they earn less money, and investors pay less for their shares. And that's why they want to sell them, sell them ahead of time. A secular growth company, on the other hand, is one where the earnings keep coming regardless of the economy's overall health. Think anything you eat, drink, smoke, brush your teeth with, use as medication. So you've got consumer staples like a Procter & Gamble or a Colgate, food, General Mills, Kellogg come to mind, drug stocks, I think you're Pfizer, a Merck, a Bristol Myers. These are the classic recession-proof names that tend to outperform whenever the economy hits a rough patch and Wall Street suddenly develops a craving for safe, consistent earnings. You don't stop eating or brushing your teeth just because of recession, or at least I I hope you don't. What makes the secular versus cyclical distinction so important to you? Why is it the first piece of Wall Street jargon that I'm translating tonight? Because it helps you figure out how much money companies will earn. And because it matters to the big institutional money managers, the guys who have so much money to throw around that they're buying and selling actually controls the day-to-day action in the market. They decide whether stocks go up or down. The whole hedge fund playbook is about when to buy and sell cyclical stocks or secular ones based on how the global economy is holding up. And this is what drives their decision-making process. Remember, historically, about 50% of the performance of an individual stock comes from its sector, which is just a fancy word for the segment of the economy a stock falls into, like a tech, energy, machinery, healthcare, uh, finance. And when it comes to sectors, much of those moves are driven by whether they fall into the secular growth or secular growth camps. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.